I have not been able to find a resource online to edit 360 video and remove the nadar or do any sort of generative fill because the latest Photoshop version cannot handle 360 images anymore. So I'm going to show you the workflow that I figured out from a few YouTube tutorials and then just messing around. Uh, and we primarily use this with Adobe Premiere where we have a series of either images or videos that are transitioning one from another. And if you currently use generative fill in Photoshop, you'll notice that you get this, what people call is the cat butt effect, which is where everything is scrunched together, which isn't that horrible, but uh, you will also see that the edge of the panoramic image will create this very sharp line. So when you are, for example, exporting this and looking at it in a virtual reality headset, uh, that becomes very apparent. This one is not so blatant, but where I noticed it is on some of these later images, uh, which are just completely unusable with such a sharp line you can see right there. So the way I have done it, um, let me go ahead and import a brand new uh, panoramic image. This was from our colleagues at Michigan State and they created some pre-post uh, photos of a park renovation in Detroit. So I'll go ahead and pull in this image into Premiere because this is the workflow we do. We don't go straight to Photoshop. We go and assemble the series of images or videos in Premiere and then we edit in Photoshop. This is, uh, for this particular image, someone is physically holding the 360 camera. I think this was on the GoPro models um, rather than using the tripod, but the same workflow would work for uh, a tripod shot where there's basically something at the bottom of the, the image that you have to clip out and replace it with a ground layer that looks natural. And this is the way Premiere would show the image when you first open it up. <laughs> In order to see the 360 view, uh, you'd go over to the settings and click VR video enable. And this would be the, again, if you exported this immediately for a VR headset or upload it to YouTube, this would be the shot that you'd show. You can change where it uh, presents at the beginning, but if you look down, you can see this individual holding the tripod. So this is exactly what we're gonna get rid of with generative fill. So to do that, uh, you'd go down to the image and have it selected, right click, and go up to edit in Adobe, Adobe Photoshop. Now this, this part is a little bit tricky if you're actively using Photoshop uh, because you have to use a certain version of Photoshop. So I will go ahead and show you what version that is. What you need to be running is version 25.1. Later versions will still have generative fill, but they will not work with 360 images. Earlier versions, you can see right here, uh, do not have the generative fill. So you will need to download the 25.1. If you have a newer version, the way that you can get the older version is with more actions and you click other versions and then you can see the available options right here. Again, this is 25.1 is the one you want. Okay, so you will right click and uh, edit in Photoshop and it'll bring it up here. Okay, so now we have this panoramic image. If you do generative fill, for example, right here over the individual, this will, and you click generative fill, this will not uh, do the projection correctly. It'll have a, have a weird effect when you actually look at it in 360. So you want to uh, go up to 3D and click spherical panora panorama and you'll click new panorama layer from selected layers. And then there's this, you can see there's a new icon for your mouse cursor and you will actually go in the direction you want the image to go. It's not reversed like you're normally used to in one of these Adobe programs. So I'm moving it down to get to the bottom of the image and you want to capture as much of the person as possible. I've been in situations where you can't see everything and I'm not sure if zooming out will help. I think that there's some fixed ratio here. Uh, and if, if you can't fit everything in there, you just have to fit the most important things, I suppose. Uh, now you can rotate it, so maybe this would help in this particular case. Okay, so then you do the lasso tool as you normally would do with generative fill and draw around your subject that you want to change or remove. When you're removing the nadar tripod person, you do not have to click anything in the text box. You can just hit generate. So what Photoshop is giving us is three different generative fill options. They look pretty similar to me. They all look totally acceptable. First one actually 
it's not as good as this third one. So let's say we want to go to the third one. Now, this is a critical point that I saw in another YouTube video. If you clicked on this background image, which is the spherical image, the generative fill is not spherical. Uh, so if you click on this background fill, you can see this icon that you can move around again. If you move this, the generative fill will stay where it is. So you have to go ahead and merge these two layers. And I tried a few different options, only one works that I found. Uh, go ahead and right click in your layers box. Uh, let's see, right click on the generative fill and you're gonna merge down. I think when I did it merge visible, it did not work. And the critical point is that you have a background layer, which is still a spherical map that you can rotate around and you can see that generative fill is staying where it's at. There's something a little bit weird right here. So let's go ahead and do this again. If it doesn't work completely the first time, you can add multiple generative fill layers on top of each other. That's no problem. Let's get rid of this crop of hair and it is gone. Let's use the second one. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the generative fill. I'm going to merge down and this will give me this a uh, spherical image here, which I can then use in Premiere. To do that, you do not go to File, Export, as you normally would. You have to go to the 3D menu and go to Spherical Panorama and Export. Now, if this is grayed out, which it was for me for a couple hours, what's going on is your background layer is no longer a spherical image. So go ahead and go back through the steps that I did. Uh, and make sure that you're following each one of them specifically uh, because it's very easy for this background layer to no longer be 360. And then you, the only way you could export is uh, going up to the file and the export function, which does not save it as a 360. You do have to go to three, 3D spherical panorama, export panorama, and we will just save it here on the desktop as a test. It seems like PNG uh, works fine. Um, and this image, then will be available on the desktop. Here it is. You're just gonna drag this on top of the original image and Premiere will reproject it, no problem, as a 360. And you can see uh, the new one I'll make green, the old one is purple. If I hide the new one, you can see the person's there. And when I unhide the new one, the person is gone with that generative fill. And you're ready to use this in your editing.